Welcome back to Camp Witch Doctor. It's finally time to install your robot's weapon. We'll do one video for each weapon type. In this video, I'll show you how to install a hammer weapon like this. Skip ahead to the next couple of videos if you're building a different robot with a lifter or a flipper. To install your hammer weapon, you're going to need the weapon itself. You're going to need your hex key, which if you remember from earlier parts of your build, you used to install your wheels also. You're going to need the axle that we're going to use for your weapon. And you're also going to need these two shaft collars. So let me show you how it all goes together. So if you remember when we talked about gear ratios for your motors, um, that gearbox is slowing down the motor. We're actually doing the same thing here. The gearboxes on your drive motor slow down the motor speed to increase the pushing force. It does this by using gears. You'll notice that we're also using gears here. The gear that goes on your servo is a bigger diameter than the gear that goes on your hammer. This means that we're gearing your hammer up instead of down. This will make your hammer swing faster than the servo can spin, and it will also give it a higher range of rotation, so you can swing from further back all the way to the other robot. So having this different gear ratio means that your hammer is actually going to swing further than just the range on your servo. So it's going to give us a little bit less hitting force, but it's going to give us more speed. And I'm a fan of fast hammer, so you can just hammer constantly on the other robot. So let's go ahead and make sure that your servo is all the way down, and then we'll use that to set the hammer position. Here's your transmitter. Go ahead and turn that on and turn your robot on. Good job making sure that the stick was all the way down. Right? It's down. So that's perfect. You can turn it back off. It's time to install the hammer itself. You'll notice that the hammer has a hole through here. That's where we're going to put the axle through. Your frame also has these two triangle holes. Now, wherever you place your hammer now matters. We made sure that the servo is all the way down. So this is a position when your stick on your transmitter is all the way down. So place your hammer wherever you want it to be when it's swung all the way down. So maybe you want to make sure that it can hit the floor. Um, I've built this robot with kids that love hearing the hammer sound when they're driving around. So they just hammer, 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 hitting the floor. Uh, so they make sure that it hits the floor. In reality, there's no robot that's at floor level. So if you wanted to, you can actually set the hammer so it's a little bit higher. And that lets you retract it a little bit further back. It's really up to you, and it's super easy to change. So we can start with it, just like you placed it now. And if once you start fighting, you want to tweak it, you can take it off, change it a little bit. So when your stick goes forward, you want your hammer to be down. Now you can place it so that it's all the way on the ground, so it hits the ground. You can place it a little bit higher. But wherever you place it now is going to be the lower limit of your hammer swing. We can adjust it a little bit with the trim, as we'll see later. But place it wherever you'd like for that to be when your stick is down. Then we're going to put this axle through here, through the frame. We're going to want to just kind of wiggle it a little bit until it goes through the hammer. You can see that's happening. You can see it coming out the other side there. All right, so now that we have that, if you push or pull the hammer by hand, you'll hear that it's also moving the servo. So you can hear the, the gears in the servo and the motor a little bit. So that makes sure that it's connected correctly. And then if you remember from earlier videos when we installed the wheels, this works the same way. So you're going to use your hex key in that set screw. We'll make sure it's loose to start. You're going to slide it on there. And we're just going to tighten it there. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. If you feel like that, that it doesn't go in, just loosen it a little bit. It should be able to go in. I'm going to tighten that. And that's it. We can check. And your hammer weapon is on. All right, I'm going to put this back on this block for you because we are going to we are going to turn it on and see how it works. All right, so it's moved a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Here, I'll hold it for you. It's so powerful. All right. Does that look good? Are you happy with how that works? Yeah. All right. That looks awesome. This is going to be a really fun robot. Now, the last step that we need to do to finish this robot is put the top plate on. And in the last video, we used the zip tie to make sure that all our wiring was uh, constrained and it wasn't going to be pinched when we put the top plate on. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and cut the zip tie a little bit shorter since it's in the way of what we're going to put our top plate on. So 
if you take a look at your pliers, you'll notice that it actually has a little cutting side right there. So I'm going to use that to cut this zip tie. All right, now that that's cut, let's try to put our top plate on. Our top plate has these cutouts, which should make it easy to slide over the top, just like that. You'll see we make sure that nothing's pinched. There's no pinched wires. And then you can go ahead and install all these top plate screws and your robot will be put together. Now let me show you how to use the trim on your transmitter to adjust the position of your weapon if you find you want to do that. So far your trim has been centered. If we shift this trim up or down, it'll adjust the position of the weapon. So let's see how that works. First, I'm gonna check that the stick is all the way down. I'm gonna turn my transmitter on. You wanna check that your trim is about in the center. Then we're gonna turn our robot on. And you can take a look at the position of the weapon. Now, when I slide this trim up or down, you'll see that the weapon is actually moving when I move that. And that's just adjusting the endpoints. So if you decided that you placed your hammer too low and you want to start it up a little bit higher, maybe because you're fighting an opponent that might be a little bit higher, you could just make that switch right here on your trim without having to take your robot back apart. Now, if you find that your robot is making a sound like this, that means that there's interference in there. So we want to be able to lift that up a little bit so it's not hitting the frame. And in this case, it's because my trim is all the way down. So if I move it up slightly, you see that that's stopped. And I can even move it up higher if I want to place that weapon higher. Now, if you find you don't have enough adjustment with your trim, then you'll want to go ahead and take this off and reposition your hammer. If you're building a hammer robot, congratulations on getting to this point in your build. If you're building a lifter or flipper, tune into the next couple of videos to see how we install those weapons.